All right. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Tushar Mehta. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and a faculty of orthopedics. Well, this video is to discuss a clinical question with all of you. And believe me, uh, this will give you a very good insight about a very important topic today. So we can start with the question. So question clearly says that there is a 58 year old lady. She has been complaining of back pain for the last couple of years. She has also noted some drooping posture of her shoulders for some time. She consulted an orthopedic doctor who advised her a few x-rays and blood tests after which, the, you know, once we get the results, doctor prescribed her uh, tablets of uh, ibendrone. Uh, I hope you have understood we are talking about bisphosphonates here. 150 milligram once a month. Now, which of the following statements resonate with her blood parameter? So, we have uh, four statements here and you have to tell me that out of these four, what do you think is right? Well, we will start with discussion of this topic for sure. But in discussion of this topic, we have to just understand a few basic things before we start discussion of this topic. See guys, fundamental is very simple. We are talking about a clinical entity here called as osteoporosis. Now, first of all, there is this bone okay i'm just giving you an example i'm just asking you to presume something you know here so there is this bone and this bone has got an element of structure somewhat like this okay i'm just giving you an example okay now before i go further i have a question for all of you why do you appreciate bone on an x-ray answer is simple bone contains calcium the lines along which calcium is deposited in a bone, that line is called as trabecula. In plural, it is called as the trabeculae and the dye network is called as the trabecular pattern. So I have shown you a trabecular pattern here, which includes four horizontal trabecula, which includes four vertical trabeculae. I hope you all will agree. And they are in a particular crisscross fashion. Now, please take a look at this one two, three, four, one, two, three, four. My question is, did I interfere with the quantity of the trabecular uh, system? No. So what did I interfere with is the quality of this trabecular system. You can see that they are no longer in a crisscross fashion. You know, the pattern has been changed. So this is a kind of a defect which is called as qualitative defect all right now i give you one more example where you can see one you can see two you can see three you can see four you can see one you can see two you can see three you can see four did i interfere with the quality of a crisscross pattern of arrangement no it is still there but somewhere down the line i can see that some part of the trabecular system is absent so when i say that it is absent so that is what is called as a quantitative defect the quantity has been hampered now i have shown you a normal bone and then i have shown you two types of defect in that bone one is called as the quantitative defect one is called as the quantitative defect now let's take this topic one step ahead what do you think is the quality of a bone because of which the bone is very famous Bone is famous because of its quality and that quality is what is called as strength power. So what is defective hair? Strength power. What is defective hair is the strength that is the power. What is the strength of the bone? You know hardness is the strength of the bone. So technically the hardness is hampered in this qualitative defect. Yes or no? Yes. That means bone has become soft. That means everyone bone has become soft. So what do you mean by osteo bone? What do you mean by Malaysia soft? So osteo means bone, Malaysia means soft. That is the soft bone disease. That is basically the 
soft bone disease which is actually the qualitative defect of the bone that is what is called as osteomalacia now let's talk about the quantitative defect now when we talk about the quantitative defect what you need to understand is that the quantity of the bone is hampered now when i say that quantity of the bone is hampered what does that mean that bone has developed certain pores in it so osteo has developed certain pores in it so that ways the condition should be called as osteoporosis which is what is called as porous bone disease i hope this concept makes a little sense to you so today the first thing that i want you to understand is a very simple thing that osteomalacia is a quantity qualitative defect while osteoporosis is a quantitative defect so far so good now moving one step further i need to tell you one thing here that there is a cell called as osteoblast. I'm sure we all are aware of what an osteoblast does. All right. So I will just write it down here. Osteoblast is a cell which with the help of, let us say, collagenous protein and let us say non-collagenous protein and let us say alkaline phosphatase makes something which is called as osteoid. Very simple. We all know that osteoblast makes bone. Agreed, but it is not a simple direct process. Osteoblast initially makes a very soft bone, malleable bone, ductile bone. That bone is what is called as osteoid. And this osteoid, osteoid is a soft bone by the way. This osteoid gets incorporation of calcium. It gets incorporation of phosphate, which is basically the mineral component. And that gives hardness, that gives strength to, the, to this bone. And it becomes something which we call as osteo. This is the basic fundamental that I need to remember. Now, let's think about it. When we talk about osteomalacia, I'm having a question for all of you. When we talk about osteomalacia, what do you mean by osteomalacia? Osteomalacia simply means vitamin D deficiency. All right. We all are aware of this fact that vitamin D is helpful in absorption of calcium from the gut. So whatever dietary calcium that we are having in our diet, its absorption in the gut has to happen through vitamin D. So think about it. If you will have a vitamin D deficiency, will that lead to altered absorption of the calcium into the gut? Yes or no? Yes. So that will lead to decreased levels of calcium in the blood. Tell me yes or no? Yes. So if vitamin D is low, please try to understand today calcium has to be low. Now think about it. Let's think about it. If calcium is low, do you think that there will be an easy conversion of osteoid to osteon? My answer is no. If there is deficiency of calcium, there won't be an easy conversion of osteoid to osteon. So technically osteon will not be properly formed. Think about it. If osteon will not properly be formed, don't you think that it will go back to the osteoblast as a feedback? Yes or no? Yes that feedback will go to osteoblast what that feedback is going to say to the osteoblast listen to me everyone osteoblast will have a feedback the feedback will tell osteoblast that mr osteoblast yes feedback mr osteoblast with the help of cp with the help of ncp and with the help of this enzyme alkaline phosphatase did you make osteoid mr osteoblast is like yes i made osteoid Mr. Osteoblast, so when you were making this osteoid, was there anything specific in your head? Mr. Osteoblast said, of course, when I was making this osteoid, I was having this feeling that one, this, one day this osteoid will have incorporation of calcium and it will become osteo and it will make me proud. Well, Mr. Osteoblast, I am the feedback and very sorry to inform you that osteon has not properly been formed, Mr. Osteoblast. Mr. Osteoblast got hurt and he was like, how the hell is this possible? I don't care. I will make more osteoid. Well, Mr. Osteoblast, please try to understand. Even though you will make more osteoid, that is not going to help the situation as a whole because at any single point of time, this osteoid has to get incorporation of calcium to make osteon. And Mr. Osteoblast, osteon will not be formed because there is calcium deficiency. Do you understand? Well, Mr. Osteoblast said, well, uh, I will <laughs> make more osteoid. Mr. Osteoblast, please try to understand whatever osteoid that you are going to make, going to make is not going to get converted into osteon. Well, I don't care. I will make more osteoid. So just because of this feedback, Mr. Osteoblast will keep on making a lot of osteoid. So what we have understood is that if there is a calcium deficiency, there will be lack of proper osteon formation. 
and if there will be a lack of proper osteon formation there will be a compensatory you know there will be a compensatory increase in the osteoblastic activity there will be a compensatory increase in the osteoblastic activity and that compensatory increase in the osteoblastic activity will be responsible for production of a significant amount of what osteoid and guys believe me when i tell you that there will be so much amount of production of the osteoid that at one point of time you will have osteoid osteon ratio more than one because you know that when there will be too much formation of osteoid then osteoid will be more than osteon when numerator is more than denominator ratio has to be more than one now think about it now think about it if osteoblastic activity in this disease has overall increased i'm sure you all will agree with me right there was a compensatory increase in the osteoblastic activity so if osteoblastic activity has been increased here so do you think that this marker of bone formation will be increased or decreased i'm asking you a very simple question if osteoblastic activity is increased then this marker of osteoblastic activity called alkaline phosphatase will be increased or decreased alp is a marker of osteoblastic activity so technically calcium will be everyone calcium will be decreased that is where the whole problem started with phosphate will be it can be normal but usually it is decreased and alp will be come on speak up everyone high so this is the biochemical you know analysis of this disease or osteomalation or let's talk about osteoporosis see we have two cells one is osteoblast i have told you about osteoblast it leads to formation of the bone we have one more cell that is what is called as osteoclast which leads to resorption of the bone we all know that many people think that this osteoporosis basically happens whenever there is excess resorption and less formation and those people are absolutely wrong osteoporosis does not mean i repeat osteoporosis does not mean excess resorption with poor formation no 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 it simply means excess bone resorption along with you know along with normal osteoblastic bone formation so technically so technically we have understood here that osteoclastic activity will increase but osteoblastic activity will be come on speak up everyone normal now think about it now think about it if osteoblastic activity is normal then alkaline phosphatase has to be normal tell me yes or no yes in osteoporosis now <laughs> most of you might be thinking that okay fine faculty has told us that osteoblastic activity will be increased or will be normal so alp will be normal but osteoclastic activity will be increased so if osteoclastic activity i repeat my words again if osteoclastic activity is increased then calcium and phosphate should be high why because what is the purpose of an osteoclast that is resorption of the bone and when resorption of the bone will happen certainly the calcium and phosphate from the bone will go out into the blood thereby increasing to the blood level values but now there is a small catch and i want you to listen to that catch years ago when we used to advise thyroid function test to anybody we used to write down t3 t4 tsh today we write free t3 free t4 why because we know that every hormone or every every mineral in our human body exists in two forms the free form the bound form all right now listen whatever blood test that we do we take blood from the anticubital vein we send it to the laboratory and we do that test that test is basically a quantitative estimation of only the free form never of the bound form listen to this very clearly that quantitative estimation is basically of the free form never of the bound form now think about it in osteoporosis do we have bone resorption yeah is calcium of the bone resorbed yeah but do you people know that calcium does not lie freely in the bone calcium is combined with something called as phosphate which becomes calcium hydroxyapatite inside the bone yes or no yes so do we have free calcium in the bone no do we have bound calcium in the bone yeah in osteoporosis when osteoclastic bone resorption happens the calcium which is released from the bone into the blood is not the free calcium it is the bound calcium are we able to understand this it is not the free calcium it is basically it is not the free calcium it is basically the bound calcium so technically bound calcium is coming from the bone to the blood thereby increasing the overall calcium level in the blood yes thereby increasing the bound calcium level in the blood 
Yes. But will anything happen to the free calcium level? No, that will be absolutely kept normal. And the blood test that we do, the quantitative estimation that we do, we take blood from the anticubital vein. It cannot check the bound form. It can check only the free form. So free form will be normal because I told you that total calcium will increase. Bound calcium will increase, but free calcium will be normal. So the quantitative estimation that we do in the blood test checks can check only free calcium. Therefore, calcium will be normal, phosphate will be normal, and ALP has already been normal because osteoblastic activity is normal. Does this make sense to all of you? So this is the understanding of this topic where not only I wanted to teach you about the answer to this question, but I wanted to give you a brief overview about this whole topic as a whole that what is osteomalacia, what is osteoporosis, one is a qualitative defect, one is a quantitative defect and how do we understand the entire pathophysiology behind it. This is what is the purpose of next exam. They just don't want to ask you about simple questions on vitamin D calcium metabolism. They don't just want to ask you about the drug of choice for osteoporosis as bisphosphonate. They want you to integrate the physiology to pathology to orthopedics. That means a vertical integration and that is what the thing has, you know, is, is turning towards a revolution, hopefully, hopefully in the, in the times to come, in the years to come. So now let us, you know, come back to the question. Now, when we come back to the question, of course, we have understood that this question is essentially talking about only one thing and that thing is osteoporosis. So in osteoporosis, you have a normal calcium, you have a normal calcium and you have a normal ALP. No, here ALP is increased, here calcium is decreased, here calcium is increased. No, answer is calcium, normal ALP, normal answer is B. I hope this makes sense to you that you have understood today. I wish you guys all the best and stay tuned for uh, more videos to see more of the integration of various aspects of 